Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem two city scheduling. So a company is planning to interview two times N people and we're given an array costs, which they don't really mention here, but at the bottom of the description, they say that the length of costs is two times N and each value in costs is actually a pair. So A cost and B cost. A cost represents the cost of flying the ith person to city A. B cost similarly represents the cost to fly them to city B. Now we want to return the minimum cost to fly every person to a city such that N people arrive at each city. So when you see minimum cost, the first thing you might think of even looking at an example is, okay, let's choose the minimum 10 of the two values. 10 is the minimum. Let's choose the minimum again, 30. Let's choose the minimum again, 50 and choose the minimum again, which is 20. And the first example is a little bit misleading because you can just take the minimum of each pair and get the solution because notice how two people, these two people went to city A and these two people went to city B, but it didn't necessarily have to be the case. It could have been that this is a 200 rather than 20 and then we would have chose this as the minimum and in that case we would have gotten three people going to city a and one person going to city b which is not what we want we want to minimize the cost but we want half of the people to go to city a and half to go to city b so knowing that the problem isn't that simple, we can try a brute force approach. And by that, I mean, we can go through every single possibility where half of the people go to city A and half go to city B. And of all of those possibilities, we can choose the one that had the minimum cost. The downside is that this is not gonna be very efficient. This is kind of what that decision tree would look like. Notice how the first choice is between 10 and 20. And remember, each pair pretty much represents a person. So we're basically saying this person can either go to city A for a cost of 10, or they can go to a city B for a cost of 20. And then next up, we'd have pretty much the same choice on both sides of the tree, but they're technically different results because we chose for that person to you know branch two different ways. And so you can kind of see that we're gonna keep branching two times. So overall, the size of the tree is gonna be two to the power of N where n is the size of the input. But remember in the context of this problem, the size of the input is actually 2n, so it's kind of confusing. I mean, I guess you could say this is two to the power of 2n. But either way, this is not very efficient is what I'm getting at. Now you can actually optimize this with caching, which is you know a dynamic programming technique to make it much more efficient. And let me talk a little bit of why we could do that. Suppose we just had a function, you know, whatever recursive function we're doing to do this backtracking, I just call it DFS just because it's short. Now, the main parameters we would wanna pass into this DFS are going to be I, which is the index that we're at. And we're also gonna pass in a couple important variables, A count and B count, which are representing the counts of people going to city A and counts of people going to city B. Of course, we're also going to maintain whatever the total cost happens to be, but that's not gonna be as important. And if you did do it this way recursively, you could cache it based on these two variables alone. I'll go into detail a little bit why. Suppose we took uh, this branch, so we put one person in city B, and then we took this branch and we put one person in city A. We have two more values in our array, so we need at least one more person going to city A and one more person going to city B. Now from here, we're gonna recursively call this function again with these parameters. Now, but also notice if we took this path, we put one person in city A and then we put one person over here in city B, then recursively we would call this exact same function with the uh, same variables for these at least, because we still need one person to go to city A and one person to go to city B. So using this idea, we would do caching, which we can do with two variables, and that will lead us to a solution of n squared complexity. You don't have to do it recursively. After implementing it recursively, it's usually easier to get the true dynamic programming solution, which will also be n squared. This is a valid solution. I think it does pass on leak code, but it's not the more, uh, not the most efficient solution because uh, there happens to be a slightly better solution, which is greedy. And I think that's what's hard about this problem because there's multiple solutions 
And if you go down the DP track, it can take up a lot of time and then you don't uh, realize that there actually happened to be a better solution. But I think in a real interview, hopefully you would still pass for doing the dynamic programming solution. Now consider a pretty simple example like this one where we have two people. For the first person, we can send them to city A for a cost of 10 or to city B for a cost of 100. Similarly, the second person can be sent to city A for a cost of 10 and to city B for a cost of 1000. Now to minimize the cost, it's obvious we would send both of the people to city A, but we have to send at least one of them to city B. Now you tell me which one would we rather send to city B? Probably this person because yes, it costs a hundred, but at least we save that thousand. And that's really the important part, right? Because then the total cost will be 110. If we do it the opposite way, the total cost will be a thousand and ten. Now going down this train of thought, we can come up with a greedy solution. So the question is, how can we quantify how important it is to send this person to city A rather than city B? How could we quantify how important it is to send this person to city A or to city B, right? Like what's more important, sending this person to city A or sending this person to city A? Well, the easiest way would just be to look at the cost difference. If we take the cost of sending them to city B, subtract it by the cost of sending them to city A, we basically get the cost of how much more expensive it is to send them to city B, which is also pretty much the cost that we would save if we rather sent them to city A than city B. So if we compute this for every single person in the input array, then we can effectively compare all the people. So let's do that. So for the first one, we'll take the second minus the first, 100 minus 10, so that's 90. That basically means it's 90, It's gonna cost us 90 more to send them to city B than city A. That's really obvious by looking at it. So let's quickly do the rest. So the second one is gonna be 990. The third one is gonna be 450, 500 minus 50. And then the last one, 99. So in this case, all of them are positive, And that really tells us that it would be cheaper to send all of them to city A rather than city B. But we already knew that but now we can effectively compare them. So now the question is, of these four people, who should we send to city B? Probably the ones that are relatively cheap, right? So these two people should be sent to city B. Now, how would we know that? Because we need to usually send half of the people to city B. Well, we would probably have to sort this input array. So we would sort this in parade and get the first half of them. So these are the people we're gonna be sending to city B. Okay, so we know these are the people we're sending to city B. These are the people we're sending to city A. But remember, all we wanted to do was return the minimum cost. Of course, we could build this output in such a way where we also preserve you know, what the original uh, values happen to be. There's definitely multiple ways to do it. There's also one way which you might like better where you're just summing actually all the values from the A side and then adding this portion. But I think it'll be a little bit easier to actually just preserve the original values because with this drawing, it's very clear. These are the people we're sending to city A, the uh, B actually, and these are the people we're sending to city A. And we're just gonna get the total cost of each of them. So if you remember this one mapped to this one, which we're sending to city B, so we take the second value, this mapped to this one, and we're taking B, the second value, this, mapped to this one and we're taking city A, this mapped to this and we're taking city A again. Total all of them up, I think we get 260, which is the minimum cost that we're gonna return. And by the way, what was the time complexity of that? Well, most of it was big O of N, but if you notice, we did have to sort this diff array. So technically the time complexity became N log N because of the sorting, but that's definitely better than the previous DP solution we had that was N squared. Okay, now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And there's many more elegant ways you could do this in Python, but in case you're watching and wanting to do this in Java or a different language, I'll try to write it in a way that you could do that. So we have two costs, right? C1, C2. They call it city A, city B, but I'm gonna stick with this. So as we iterate through costs, we're going to get the diff. And the way I was doing it in the drawing is C2 minus C1, but you could obviously do it the opposite way and get the same result. As we take this diff, we're gonna to want to sort the array based on this diff. So actually let's create a diffs array up above. We're going to take this diff and add it 
to the above array, but actually let's uh, also preserve the original values C1 and C2 as well. So basically these three values are going to be added to this. Okay, so now we can have our result, which is gonna be the minimum cost. Initially, we're gonna set it to zero, and then we just wanna go ahead and iterate through uh, every single value in our diffs. And actually, before we even start iterating through the array, don't forget that we wanted to sort uh, the diffs array. So let's make sure to just do that. By default, it will sort it based on the difference, which is really what we care about. And remember, the first half of them we want to send to city two, and then the second half we're going to send to city one. So we can do that pretty easily by just taking the index, checking if it's less than uh, half of the length of the array, which, you know, is pretty straightforward to do. And if that's the case, then we can add the cost to the result. But remember, what cost are we getting? Well, let's take the diffs at index i, which is the position that we're at right now. And then we want the cost to send them to city two. So we can get that by taking index two. The else is gonna be just as simple, so we can just copy and paste it. But remember, the only difference was that then the second half of them we're gonna be sending to city one, so we can get index one to do that. And then all we have left to do is return the result and let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's very efficient. I will mention that there's actually a much more elegant way to write this code. You can check that out on the leak code discuss section, but I thought that this was a more intuitive way to do it, especially the way that I drew out the picture. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.